Hello there, I am reading two books about fire engines and dogs. We like dogs around here. I think there's one outside this door that you can see. She just left the room, but I think she wants to come back in because she hears me talking. The Wonder Book of Firemen and Fire Engines by Lisa Peters, pictures by William Wisner. Um, copyrighted 1956. From his corner place in the firehouse, Spotty the Dalmatian Dog watches the firemen busily at work. The firemen are cleaning their equipment. They scrub the hose with soap and water. They wash it and polish the fire trucks with, until the metal gleams. Nothing is heard but the swish swish of brushes and brooms until clang, 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 clang. A loud ringing gong sounds the alarm and tells the firemen that they must put out a fire. Quickly they put on their coats and boots and helmets. Some of the firemen who are upstairs slide down long poles so that they will not lose any time scurrying onto the fire trucks. Vroom, 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 vroom. The huge motors of the shiny red giants say that they are ready to go. Spotty perks up his ears. The sliding doors roll up. Out of the wide doorway comes the first fire engine, a hook and ladder truck. It is such a big fire truck, it needs two drivers. One man drives in front, while the other man drives in the back, or steals, steers the back wheels. That's hard to say, steers the back wheels. Almost said, steals the back wheels. Here's a fireman telling some children not to cross the street. Firemen are our helpers. Next comes the pumper engine on its hose that will be attached to a hydrant. On it is the hose that will be attached to the hydrant. Water from the hydrant will be pumped through the hose and forced high up and far out onto the fire. An emergency truck rushes to the fire too. It carries many extra things that the firemen may need, extra hose, axes, hooks, life nets, and res uh, rif life nets for rescue work first aid kits, blankets, and other things to take care of people. I'm having trouble reading tonight. The fire chief arrives at the fire in his special red car. He hops out and gives orders to the firemen, telling them how and where to fight the fire. The firemen obey his instructions. A high ladder on one of the trucks points up towards the sky. One of the firemen climbs to the top of the ladder, where he shoots a stream of water onto the fire. Other firemen enter the burning building, carrying a long hose from the pumper engine. Some carry axes, which can be used to break down locked doors and windows, so that the choking smoke will clear away. I want you to remember that page about breaking down doors and crashing open windows. At last, the fire is out. The firemen have stopped the fire from spreading and, the, and burning more of the building than it already has. Tired but knowing that they have done their job well, the men return to the trucks. The firemen ride slowly through the streets in the hook and ladder truck. They ring the bell gently to let everyone know that the fire is out and everything is safe again. Sparky barks a welcome greeting to the heroes. He has done a good job too, while the firemen have been away. And what might that be? Why, minding the firehouse, of course. Looks like everybody has a job. So as I'm reading this book, I said, let's look at this page here. And let's remember the page where they talked about breaking open windows so that they can spray the water in and let the smoke clear away and breaking down doors. Does your family have a fire escape plan? One for maybe during the day would be pretty easy. 
Um, but one for at night would be important to have. Do you have a special time where um, someone checks the um, the little fire alarms that are on the ceilings? I think there needs to be one on every floor and sometimes in every room and everyone needs to know which way to run in case of a fire. It's not nice to think about that, but it's important to think about it so that everyone knows what their role is and how to get out very, very quickly. And also, not to be afraid of the firemen if they have to make a loud noise and break in. They're doing it in order to put the fire out and to rescue people. So that's something you can talk about as a family and maybe someone can drop some maps and you can have some practices. We actually had some practices. Um, we had some one window that would have been a very far jump so we needed to have a special ladder that could be used to for someone to go out that window. So we would have practices once or twice a year. And that also became a part of our school program. Children in school have a practice for a fire drill. Every once in a while the alarms will go off and everyone lines up and goes outside the building and has a special meeting place. So I hope that you have a special meeting place and a special plan just for the house that you live in. Okay, let's read another book. This book is about a dog. Carrie, the fire engine dog. <clears throat> and this was by Frank Lewis and Alfred Korcha, Korchia, illustrated by Dorothy Grider. And another one of those Roman numerals, but it was gifted to, um, to Uncle Bruce um, in 1963, so it's pretty old. This is the story of a real dog who became the mascot of Hook and Ladder Company number 29 of the New York City Fire Department. After nine years of faithful service, Carrie answered his last call. And retired. Carrie was a dog who did not have a home. He had no one to care for him or to feed him. He had long, dark, shaggy hair. On one side his chest, of his chest was a large white spot. He was big and strong. His brown eyes looked at you as if to say, May I be your friend? But he did not have any place to live. One day he was walking wearily along wishing he had a good dinner and a nice place to sleep. Hello there, came a voice from a doorway. It looks like you need some rest and a good meal. Before Carrie knew it, what was happening, two big hands lifted him up and carried him gently inside. Carrie saw a man dressed in a blue uniform with shiny buttons. Sit down here and I'll get you some supper, said the man. He took a bowl of milk and a big juicy bone from the table and gave them to Carrie. Bow wow, said Carrie after he had eaten his supper. That was his way of saying thank you. Then he looked around him. He was in a strange place filled with big red fire trucks. One truck had a great long ladder on the sides, great long ladders on the sides and top of it. Another fire truck had hose on it. He saw more men in blue uniforms with shiny buttons. They were talking with the man who had given him his supper. They called that man Jim. After a while, Fireman Jim came over to Carrie. If you want to stay here in the firehouse, he said, you have to be cleaned up a bit. How about a nice warm bath? Carrie did not think much of that idea, but before he could run away, Fireman Jim picked him up and put him into a large tub of water. That night, Fireman Jim put a blanket in the box for Carrie. He put the box in the bunk room where the firemen slept, and that was the first bed 
that Carrie ever had. As usual, one fireman stayed downstairs on watch duty. He sat at a desk near a big bell. His duty was to answer the telephone and to listen for the bell, which meant that there was a fire. All the other firemen took their rubber boots off of the big red fire truck. They carried them upstairs to the bunk room and undressed for bed. They fixed their boots inside the legs of their trousers and put them beside their beds and they all went to sleep. Late that night, Carrie was dreaming of a big beefsteak when a loud bell woke him up. Get out, the man on watch shouted to the fireman. Fire at Maple and Elm Streets. All around Carrie and the firemen were all around Carrie. The firemen were springing up out of their beds. They were jumping into their trousers and large rubber boots. Fireman Jim ran and took hold of a big shiny pole with his hands and then zip. He disappeared through a big round hole in the floor. Bow wow, barked Carrie. He could not understand what was happening. Then another and another of the firemen disappeared down the pole hole. Carrie could hardly believe his eyes. When at last the firemen had all gone, Carrie ran to the shiny pole too and he looked down through the big hole in the floor. Down below was a red fire truck and the firemen were scrambling upon it. Carrie wanted to follow them but he was afraid of the pole. He ran down the stairway and rushed down head over heels. As he got to the bottom of the stairs, the big red fire truck with Fireman Jim and the other firemen on it pulled out. The fire truck made a terrible clatter. Clang, 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 woo, clang, 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 woo-wee. Carrie stood in the doorway and watched it go. Woof, he said sadly. How he wished he could have gone with the firemen. When the firemen came back, Carrie was standing forlornly in the doorway. Fireman Jim patted him on the head. Next time the alarm rings, Carrie, I'll take you with me. Think you'd like that? Bow wow, said Carrie happily, wagging his tail. The next night, when everyone was fast asleep, Carrie woke up suddenly. Ding, 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 rang the fire bell loudly. The next moment, Carrie felt Fireman Jim pick him up in his strong arms and run for the pole hole. He tucked Carrie under one arm and put his armor, other arm around the pole. Zip! Down the pole they went, right through the floor, with all the other firemen following. They all jumped onto the big red fire truck. Bow wow! barked Carrie happily. Fireman Jim, who drove the fire truck, showed Carrie where to sit, on the front seat right by him. How proud Carrie was. Bow wow! Bow wow! he barked. This is the life for me. He looked straight ahead. He was going with Fireman Jim and he was ready to help. Clang, 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 woo! Clang, 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 woo-wee! Such excitement. Soon the truck stopped by a house that was on fire. Smoke was pouring from the windows. Looks like a bad fire, Carrie, said Fireman Jim as he leaped from the fire truck. Off came the big water hose from the truck. Fireman connected the hose to the big red fire engine and then another to the fire hydrant in the corner. Other firemen stretched a hose from the fire truck to the burning house. Up went the ladders. Two firemen ran up to the roof with a hook and an axe, a big axe. Into the house hurried Fireman Jim. Carrie went with him. Start the water, shouted the captain, where the firemen were pouring water on the fire. While the firemen were pouring water onto the fire, Carrie thought he heard a whimper. Through the smoke, he ran to the cellar where the sound came from. Woof, woof, mmm, mmm, Carrie heard coming from the corner. He knew it was a dog in trouble. When he got to the corner of the wood bin, he not only found a dog, but three puppies, too. He grasped one of the puppies in his mouth and carried it through the smoke-filled cellar up and out the stairs and the do out the doorway. 
He put the puppy down and ran back for another, and then he ran back through the smoke for the third time. He met the mother dog with the puppy in her mouth, trying to find the stairs. Just as she got to the bottom, she fell. Carrie picked up the puppy and she was, that she was carrying and brought it out to fresh air. Then he hurried back and started to pull the mother dog up the stairs. He was struggling to get her out of the cellar when Fireman Jim stumbled over him. Is that you, Carrie? He cried. What are you doing here? But poor Carrie was too tired to answer. Then Fireman Jim gently carried both the mother dog and Carrie out of the cellar. The mother dog and her three little puppies were safe, thanks to Carrie. He was a hero. How proud he was when Fireman Jim called him up beside him on the seat of the big red fire truck. You are our mascot, Fireman Jim told Carrie. Then Fireman Jim took from his pocket a shiny helmet on a silver chain. It was a helmet just like the one the fireman wore, except that it was tiny and made of silver. Fireman Jim fastened it around Carrie's neck. How the crowd cheered. From that day on, Carrie was a member of the hook and ladder company number 29. The firehouse was his home. The firemen bathed him and brushed him. They gave him meals, and Carrie slept every other night in a nice clean bed. Or <laughs> every other night. Carrie slept every night in a nice clean bed. Every time the fire alarm rang, Carrie and his fireman friends jumped on the big red fire truck and dashed down the street to a different fire and for Carrie new adventures. I actually know the story of a dog, and it went on the national news um, that saved its family's house. Its fam the dog's family was on vacation, and um, while I, I think the dog actually started the fire by accident by jumping up at the stove and accidentally turning on a burner. And when the house started to burn, the dog barked. The neighbors heard it. And they were able to get the dog outside and to call the fire department in time to save the family's home. So, um, I can't say enough about dogs. Can I? How many dog stories do I read? The next stories I'm going to read are about loud noises. I hope that you enjoyed these books and that you made an escape plan.